Deep in the heart of Montage Mountain, the Rail Riders have been celebrating the culmination of 25 years in NEPA over the first 60 games of the season. Tonight, that all comes to an apex as we honor the man that they call Miles with a Hall of Fame induction. For the first 25 years of the franchise's incarnations, you've seen two different affiliation changes as well as three different incarnations of the team. Tonight, we look back and honor the past with the Red Barons as well as we look forward to the future. But more importantly, we honor you and the stories that have been told right here where once the old Lackawanna County Stadium once stood and now the beautiful reimagined PNC Field. Let's go ahead and take a look back at last night's highlights, but today is about so much more than last night. We start in the bottom of the third inning, SWB with a one to nothing lead. Kyle Roller facing his former teammate at ECU. He's going to single one through the right side. That would play to Donis Garcia as he rounds third and scores from second with the Rail Riders leading two to nothing. Next batter, it's the 18 wheeler and zealous wheeler. He hits a deep fly ball to left center field. That goes into the Rail Riders bullpen. That would play two runs on the big fly. SWB jumps out early. Four to nothing. It's just the bottom of the third inning. On to the last of the fourth now, Adonis Garcia at the dish. It was one of his big extra base hits on the day. He cracks the ball to deep left field, no doubt about it. This one into the Tide's bullpen as Garcia with his second RBI of the night as SWB takes the lead 6-1. to one. It was one of three run scoring base hits he had on the night. Next inning for SWB, the runs continue to come in bunches. Kyle Roller standing at the plate once again against Wright. He's going to get the best of his former Pirate teammate. The home run parade continues as he sends a ball opposite way into the PA lottery bullpen. His second RBI of the night. The Rail Riders continue to pull away from the Tides 7-1. Top six now, Norfolk's Brett Wallace says, I can hit two as he sends one to deep left field into the Tides bullpen as Norfolk puts a dent in the deficit at 7-2. Four batters later, Cord Phelps with two men on. He's going to hit a bouncing ball to the shortstop, Carmen Angelini. Heads up play here as he goes to third to Zellif Swiller. That gets Xavier Paul in a pickle. Joseph would tag him out. The putout went 6-5-4. to five to four. That ended the threat for SWB. Bottom seven now, Jose Perella. His hot bat continues to tear through the International League. As he blasts one to deep left field, it was one of four home runs hit on the night by SWB hitters. That tied for a season high in the Dinger Mart for SWB. He's one of three hits on the day for Jose Perella and three RBIs on the night. As the Rail Riders take the final game of the series 12-6, they've salvaged just one game of the four-game run against the Norfolk Tides. Last night's game against the Norfolk Tides, the Rail Riders were officially able to turn the Tides against a hot-hitting Norfolk team that had won six straight ball games. It was their longest winning streak of the season. Bruce Billing spun five innings in picking up his fourth win of the campaign. It was his first win since all the way back in April the 17th. He missed three weeks of the season with the Rail Riders. He still co-leads the team in the wins category with Jim Miller, the Rail Riders reliever. Last night's ball game also featured 11 extra base hits from the Rail Riders offense. It's the second time this season that SWB has gone for multiple extra base hits in an affair against Norfolk squad. When we return here on the Misericordia pregame show, we sit down with you, the fans, so that you can tell us your stories about what makes this place so special. I'm the director of publications for the New York Yankees. Misericordia University breeds winners. If you go there and you're willing to work hard, it's almost impossible not to succeed. We started uh, Tony Buff Especially Foods by jarring our own pasta sauce. Misericordia has given us all types of knowledge on every aspect of business. They want us to succeed here and they'll help us any way they can to ensure that we succeed. Welcome back on the Misericordia pregame show as the Rail Riders get set to open up a four-game run against the Toledo Mud Hens. Tonight, though, it's a little bit more about baseball. It's about the moments that you've shared right here, not only at the old Lackawanna County Stadium, but at the new reimagined PNC Field. For the season ticket holders that have been with us through a quarter century of baseball in NEPA, some of you have met your wives, others, lifelong friends. But for most of you, you've seen moments that will last a lifetime. Let's go ahead and take a look back at some of the interviews that we recorded with some of our longest standing season ticket holders. The stadium has changed the most. I compared to where the stadium was when it was originally built. It was a two-deck stadium, uh, but now it's more open, it's more fan-friendly. Fan uh, like before when you would be coming to the game, you, if you wanted to get a, a hot dog or a soda, you had to go out to the concourse and you, you'd lose the the game, but now it's you can still get your hot dog and still kind of keep track of what's going on. 
over to the grass, the natural grass, you know, artificial, I, I would say. Well, the stadium got better, obviously. It's a, it's a beautiful stadium now. It's a, a grass field instead of a, an artificial field. Um, I think the fans still have the same excitement uh, when they come out to the game. I know I cer we certainly do. And uh, we really come to see the players and, uh, you know, whether they're win finishing first place or last place, uh, we really like to support the team because uh, they're our guys. Probably my most memorable moment was opening night, uh, 1989, because it was the first time baseball was back in the area, and it was very exciting. The crowd was very excited. We had a full house. Uh, everything was fantastic. That was probably my most memorable. I saw Daryl Strawberry hit a home run over right field here. Uh, when the Phillies had their players here, we used to, I enjoyed seeing the players play. Uh, but as far as, it's hard to remember a specific one, but what, Strawberry was for sure. June 24th, 1989. First of all, it was our anniversary, my wife Ann and mine. But second of all, it was the night Floyd Rayford hit a grand slam home run in the ninth inning, which ended the game. And the thing about that was my brother-in-law, I used to leave the stadium after the seventh inning because back then, traffic was atrocious. It would take you 10 or 15 minutes to get to Route 81. But that night, for some reason, we stayed and we witnessed something that we'll never forget. Uh, the Grumps used to come and pick up my great-granddaughter and put her on the fence and give her a hug and a kiss, which he, she loved that. She used to follow them all over the ballpark. She thought she was the queen of the ballpark at that time. Uh, it has nothing to do with baseball but meeting my wife here. I mean, that's been my, uh, I never dreamed I would meet my wife here. Well, it's, it's, it's just the fact you have the opportunity to pick where you want to sit and enjoy the games. And uh, it's, it's just a wonderful thing. Just the day-to-day, -day, the quality of baseball, it's just super, it's just like coming to the major leagues. And I mean, the names you see here, when you watch a game on TV years after, it's like, I saw these guys here in the stands. I saw them on the field. You even get to talk to some of them. I mean, that's, I think you can't uh, beat in the minor leagues. The players that played back then, uh, I'm not a Philly fan, but I, I appreciated the hustle. Even though they didn't have the best record of uh, the league, they always hustled and showed determination. Uh, at the time, the stadium was top-notch because everybody was building these cookie-cutter stadiums, and ours was one of the best around. I think that I would encourage anybody to be a season ticket holder because for me, it's just wonderful to leave work uh, at 5 or 6 o'clock at night, uh, change clothes and come up here, and 10 minutes later I'm sitting at a, a ballpark seeing major league, really, uh, major league capable players uh, playing, and uh, it's a good community up here. The stadium is a lot of fun, the people are a lot of fun. Can't beat the entertainment value either for a family at this level. It's just terrific. And you see the players before they go up. We saw Andy Ashby. We, uh, we saw some of the players who would rehab here. Uh, some of the players on the Ike, uh, the kid for the Yankees right now, Gardner, we saw him play here for a couple of years. So, so it's, it's, it's nice to see those kinds of things. It's been like a dream come true uh, seeing baseball in my backyard. I think every small boy growing up has uh, played baseball and just being able to see something like this, seeing the great players, the great teams, future Hall of Famers, future Yankees, future Phillies, it's just been outstanding.
Tonight, a legend goes into the Hall of Fame, a man that has roamed the depths of the minor league ranks as well as had some time in the show throughout his long and storied career. Since 2007, he skippered this franchise. He's led it to its only Governor's Cup championship in 2008. The man that they call Miles has sat right here throughout the last couple of years. While he goes into the Hall of Fame tonight, he's known as a longtime skipper and the franchise's all-time wins leader. Tonight, he skippers a team that looks to get back on the right track after a win against the Norfolk Tides. Brian Gordon gets the ball for SWB. First pitch scheduled for 7.05 on this historic night at PNC Field.